Hey, welcome back to another video for our car class uh, application. In this store, we're going to finally get the checkout button working. So in the previous video, we were able to fill the shopping cart with items that we want to buy, and then checkout is supposed to show the final price. So let's uh, double click on checkout, and we'll start coding in this function here called button checkout click. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is come up with a total price. So the uh, data type is called decimal, and I'm just going to use the word total. So the, uh, the total is automatically calculated in our class. So I think there was a method called checkout. There was. Okay, so the checkout method is supposed to return a decimal value, and it looks like it's all going to work. Okay, now I want to show that decimal value in a label. So let's see, what was I, my label? Down here, this label was called uh, label total. Okay, so now you can see why we had to give it a custom name is because it is being referenced in this code. Okay, so the label is going to be updated. So LBL total, and the way you update it is to set the text value. Let's set it to the word, uh, to the value of total. Now, uh, what's wrong with this? It's got a little underline. It says we need to uh, we need to convert it. So it says it's a decimal and we need to change it to a string so it'll fit in the label. So we can just do a dot to string. So to string is a method that's already built into the decimal type. Now it would be nice to have a dollar sign in front of it, so let's just tack that on as a concatenation. Okay, do you think that's it? Uh, let's see if it works. There's going to be a problem, but this is pretty close. The reason why it's not going to work is because when we do a checkout, the, the uh, cart is supposed to be emptied, and I don't think it will be. So let's try add an item here. So let's add a car, and let's buy a few of those. And now when we do checkout, it does say we just spent $7,404. However, if I choose add to cart again, and do checkout, that seems to be working. Let's try to check out again. Now I get zero. So this should be cleared when we click the checkout button. That's really the only issue that I see. So let's uh, go back in here and let's do an update here. So this was called uh, cart uh, binding source and we do we need to reset the bindings. And I'm gonna use the false parameter. Okay, so let's see if I can get the semicolon in there. Let's run it again and let's try a couple of cars and see if the checkout is processing correctly. Okay, so I have two different cars to pick from. So I want to buy two Focuses and one Camaro, and the price tag is 45000 and the shopping cart is empty. So if I check out with an empty cart, I get zero. Let's buy a few Camaros and check out. Seems to be working, and the cart is empty. All right, so you think you got your app all built and it's all nice. There's a couple of challenges that are still left over for you. So uh, I only have three properties in my car, and you probably have five or more. And so let's include those into our Create a Car app. The second is the error checking. So if I were to add a Ford Focus again, and uh, this time instead of money, I just put in a value like ASDF and ran it, you're going to see that I crashed the program. And it says uh, an input string is not in the correct format. So we don't want our users to experience crashes. We need to do some more data checking. So there are multiple ways to prevent that from happening. So let me bring up the list of challenges that are here. So first of all, the new properties. Uh, make sure that you have those two extra properties that we did in a previous assignment. And then error checking. So whenever we do a parse, like an int parse, uh, that should be familiar to you. And using try catch is a great way to prevent uh, um, you know, catching errors before they crash the program. However, you can also do some checking here. So in uh, the price check here, we've got ourselves um, pure text, right? There might be some ways in C Sharp where you can filter out expected values or it won't accept anything except for digits. And so the form will help you with a little bit of error checking as well. So get those two challenges done and you've got yourself a completed app. Okay, so now we've kind of reached the end of the app. What improvements really need to be made to make this a real-world app? Well, first of all, this inventory is ridiculous. Every time you start the program, you have to rebuild the inventory from scratch. So there should be a database connection, or at least a text file, 
where you have previously defined cars. And so that would be one way to persist the data of the inventory. Secondly, when you check out, what happens to the checkout? Well, it prints it on the screen and nothing else. Does it create an order? Doesn't seem to. So we need to tie this into a database and make it an order inventory system where we have orders and tables and databases. So there's a lot of work to go on in the back end. But the point of the assignment isn't to create a fully functioning uh, commerce app. The point is, and my main point, is to show you how to create classes. And so we did that successfully. In the car class, we have properties for the car. In the store class, we have properties for two different lists. And we made them separate from our graphical user interface. So the, um, the car GUI relies on the same classes that the, um, that the console app did. So in a future class, if we were to take this same kind of project and put it on a web interface, you could still program in C-sharp and use the uh, .NET framework and create a front end that is different again. You could have a console app, you could have a, a Windows app, and then you could have a, a web app. And there's different kinds of uh, mobile apps. So you could do a similar process where you use cars and store in multiple different uh, front ends. And so that, that brings us to the conclusion here of our car store app. And hopefully you're a little wiser now on object-oriented programming and interfaces that can be attached to it.